actually airing on the 28th which is just after Christmas and I do hope that that festive season, season was a good one for you particularly if you're vegetarian and you weren't indulging in the turkey. Tonight my very special guest is Tracy Wall. Tracy welcome to Girl Talk. Nice to be here. Tracy your, your, um, your current incarnation is, <laughs> is as president of Midsummer and is that right? True, Pres just, president of Midsummer. Yeah. It, how and guru, but <laughs> yeah, and no. a general all-round guru. That's right. Well, it would be an understatement to say that you, you have a little bit of a profile in our community. Yeah, I've worked. Uh, I've worked for also for four years, and I think at last count did something like the last 19 parties and events in a row. So uh, I felt very much that my work there was done, and it was time to move on. Yeah. So uh, still a member of also when. Uh, as you know, uh, Red Raw is one of the uh, feature events of Midsummer, so uh, you know it's a uh, it's there's still an integral relationship there. So uh, I watch and uh, with, with uh, keen interest. Yeah, and I think as well you were involved in coordinating the street party for, in, for last year for Midsummer. Is that right? I've been involved in uh, Midsummer for four years. Uh, basically, about four years ago, there was a bit of a, a rebirth uh, of the community organisation. Uh, Claire Beckworth, Peter Edmonds, Will Walton and a number of other of us came onto the board at a time where uh, the uh, exiting board I suppose were tired and uh, as I said I've been on the board for four years in various portfolios. I probably, because of my commitment with also I, at that being at the same time of year I adopted I suppose, supportive roles but my primary role, role I suppose was a was um, handling and inventing a uh, ride for the first two years at Luna Park so creating ride and the uh, you know, putting the drag queens uh, onto rides and creating the hysteria that uh, hopefully will be right again. That'll be uh, after the Pride March. Yeah, great. I noticed that um, with this festival, it's, it was last year. It was four weeks, so it's gone back to three weeks. I think that's a good thing. It's a little bit more condensed. Mm. Is that one of your initiatives? Uh, I think I said after the festival, we did a debrief, and the, last year was our tenth anniversary, so we didn't want anyone to miss out. And in order to avoid a uh, uh, overlaps of dates and openings where you add an extra week to the festival um, and again that was for good reason uh, this year just being a 11th year we've decided to go back to the traditional four weekends three weeks and I think as I said a festival is supposed to be ten intense it's supposed to be exciting you're supposed to feel like you've missed out on stuff when you don't go so uh, mm -hmm. we're trying to create that sort of um, excitement that uh, festivals you know all over the world not, and uh, that have of being you've got to be there or you miss out very ephemeral sort of stuff yeah we should so probably say for uh, viewers that are watching the Midsummer Festival is in fact that there's been a gay uh, cultural festival yeah arts and cultural festival is uh, the, the byline it actually runs from the 16th of January through to the 7th of February and there's lots of events and this is what you're looking out for uh, it, duplicated in the poster and but this is at the program so if you have that program at home you'll be able to sort of follow up any of the events what are some of the big draw cards this year? I think uh, most people will know Midsummer for the uh, major events that the festival has been built up around uh, ca uh, Carnival for example in Alexander Gardens that grew out of Picnic in the Park yeah. uh, the street party that's now in its fourth year, second year at uh, Commercial Road. How do you think that's gone in Commercial Road, just out of interest? Uh, look, I think it's hard for small business at the moment and I think Commercial Road as a business district uh, will be uh, waiting uh, feverishly for the Christmas rush and the summer rush. So, <laughs> I mean, fingers crossed that with um, the reopening of the Pran Market, the, uh, mm. the addition of uh, large re retail and hospitality outlets like Let's Eat will uh, revitalise what is a, a small but very uh, hard-working 
gay community sector and gay business sector in that area. So we're very happy to be in Commercial Road and have, uh, and I believe it is the, uh, the as I said, it's, uh, it's a strange street to work because of uh, it's not dense, as it's a linear, a, a street party is a linear festival and you've got to work with the buildings that are there. So mm -hmm. it is very hard to, to work in the Car Phillips radio uh, shop and uh, some of the empty buildings into a vibrant street party, but <laughs> we've, we've got to put the hot dog stand somewhere, so that's what we're working on. Shopkeepers beware, take out that tenancy <laughs> really quickly because it'll be worth your while. Um, how would we go through this one here? How do you think the Mount Midsummer Festival compares to something like Mardi Gras? I mean, I know that in size they're probably a little bit different. I think, I mean, basically I like to describe Midsummer as a festival money can't buy. Uh, as I said, we don't have any, so basically the main, uh, the main difference is that Midsummer is an umbrella, that it relies on the, uh, the desire and the impetus of uh, our cultural activists, performers, uh, community groups to actually participate rather than uh, us going out and purchasing uh, ex exhibitions or uh, stars. So really I suppose that's the one significant difference is that uh, we, we produce very little apart from our major events. So uh, it's an open door festival that relies on the goodwill and the creativity and the commitment of the community with uh, because of our limited resources, very limited resources. I think to that end out of uh, uh, like many uh, many things, good things come from small small beginnings. And uh, said so I think that in the post 90s, pre millennium uh, times we live in, that big is not necessarily best. Best is best. And I think that uh, the quality that midsummer uh, the midsummer events compare to any to any festival. As I said, Melbourne is um, a significant. Uh, cultural capital and the gay festival that, that, that we run reflects the, uh, really does reflect accurately the cultural position that Melbourne occupies generally and as, as I said what Melbourne is, Midsummer is and uh, Midsummer is very Melbourne and Melbourne is very Midsummer so it's not like Mardi Gras in any way mm. uh, other than uh, probably the desire of a few people to wear very little for the month off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. we did this community based thing very well I think in Melbourne and there's, a, there's one show, The Razor, it's called Razor Babies? Razor Baby. Uh, which is baby. From, <laughs> Razor baby. Baby, there's one. It's from Club Swing? Yeah, basically Club Swing, for uh, th uh, those uh, audience who don't know, is a Melbourne-based physical theatre performance group that uh, basically uh, have, have born out of circus skills. Uh, predominantly it's a women's group, mm. uh, but not strictly uh, tied to that. This, this performance there will be uh, uh, some gay men performing it as well. But, uh, They've, this is, I think, their third show, and their previous two shows, due to uh, the lack of financial resources, have been forced to premiere their work in other states. So it's things like that that uh, Midsummer feel very proud of, that for the first time a Melbourne company can get to premiere their new work in Melbourne to their home audience rather than have to wait for Mardi Gras to buy it or for an interstate festival to, um, to fund it this year. Uh, Midsummer and Club Swing work together to to actually track Australia Council Arts fer Federal funding and local government funding in order oh. to, to put it on in Actually our hometown. Actually funded? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's a very, it's a $100,000 project. So. Which is actually not very much, really. No, not, 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 not when you've got a you know group of girls who eat a lot and uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> like to swing around. Oh, I grasses. suspect Catherine Nisha would be eating at least $100,000 <laughs> right, I mean. in veggie burgers. That's right. <laughs> so no, as I said, it's a, that, that, that festival has already been purchased um, and to be produced by Mardi Gras up at the Seymour Centre, I think, up there, and um, I have no doubt that it will travel the world after midsummer. Mm. Their work is very good. It's so. great. Mm. Lovely cultural exchange. And there's quite a strong visual art component in this year's, this coming midsummer. Mm. Um, the new Q2, it will have it now. It's, it, is that actually the, that, that had its first year last year at the gallery, mm. but this year it's at Linden. Correct. And um, that's just part of a whole lot of uh, kind of visual arts type. It is. I said visual arts. Uh, we've uh, we've always had a very strong representation of uh, of visual arts within the program, and UQ being a uh, uh, art prize show where basically people uh, uh, put in t uh, what's the word submit work to uh, in order to get in and I said the first prize is sponsored by Globe right. and it's two thousand dollars so it's a and in art, in any art circles that's a fairly decent uh, art prize so uh, there's uh, I think the uh, all the entries have closed and they're, uh, they're uh, judging the work now and that will be hung at the Linden and I said if you if you're not necessarily into visual arts and don't go to every exhibition or studio if you go to New Q you'll see a, a, a very cross section of uh, queer artists performing uh, 
uh, showing work that's relevant to them today. So yeah. that's a strong one. The other main, uh, main uh, uh, public art program that we're doing is one that's called uh, Queer Street. Queer Street. This is very interesting because this mm. is that whole thing. It's like the, with the, um, the, the Lunar Park is mm. taking it into kind of public spaces. I think it's it very is. important. It is. It is. I think one of our main uh, preoccupations this year is for the gay community to access, uh, you know, the the civic and public spaces and arts organisations that, that that the government fund or that, that are the significant resources of the city and claim them to be our own. Mm. So the public art program will take in, there'll be public art works at uh, bus stops, train stations or Spencer Street, Flinders Street. Uh, there'll be a mass hang which is a, our own version of a rotary art show where uh, okay, sir, I take this as a personal I invitation will. I've got some lovely create, collages that's right to create work and as I said hopefully we're ho hopeful for like uh, in excess of 200 uh, mm. uh, things just hanging along the gardens that uh, so that we can discover the artists within all of us I just want to throw in one of these really hairy questions here. I think we'll go for this with the whole millennium. A lot of mm. big deal is being made of this whole millennium thing. Where do you think as a community we're heading in the next millennium? How do you think we're shaping up? I, I think that the gay community uh, at best possibly uh, sets trends that at worst follows them. So I mean, there's, the, the gay community can probably be uh, attributed to setting some very bad trends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I think, I mean, We've I think... We've got to do something about the drag, Tracy. Well, no, oh, I think dra no, actually think drag's really taken a turn for the up. I think that there's a bit <laughs> of a bit of... Compared bit to of 10 years ago, as I said, I'd never seen a drag sh drag show. I didn't... I mean, before I started, also I didn't know a drag... One drag from another. Yeah. Oh, that's but, my theory. They all look the same. It's true, but they still get a bit confused. One person but, uh, lots of mirrors. <laughs> but I think, basically, the, the gay, gay and lesbian community will face the same issues as uh, communities generally, and that will be that in a in a more oppressive world where basically it will be, it's, it's very dog-eat-dog, -dog. I mean, I, I do think that uh, the, yeah, it's, a long, it's a long time between drinks, between civility at the moment, as I said, we're, and I think the gay community, with uh, living under the cure of AIDS, and I suppose that's the thing that one hopes in the next millennium, that there will be a cure, it'll be interesting whether there actually is still a coalition community or whether the boys will go off and do the boys thing, which the boys did a lot of before mm. HIV, and the girls will do it, go off and do the lesbian feminist thing, which they did a lot. So one had hopes that having uh, fought the battle and won the battle, that uh, the gay and lesbian community can get to party a little bit more in the next millennium and actually tackle some of the other big issues that still face us. Yeah, they're big questions and probably too big to even handle in this 12 minute interview. <laughs> Tracy, thanks for coming That's in. Right. This is the program, everybody. It's the Midsummer Festival. Actually, on from the 16th of January through to the 27th of February, and we'll be covering a lot of events here on Ben TV. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. plants are printed on tags attached to them with the pink fading out. Those ones there are the oldest plants on earth. Survivors from the age of the giant fern folly. And here's my poor lady. They never get away. The lady exudes this marvelous perfume which attracts them. They plunge into a chalice and they never come out. This operation you perform is called... Uh, lobotomy. What is most fascinating about this film is the manner in which it deals with its subject matter, or fails to. Not only does the love that dare not speak its name, dare not speak its name, the queer culprit himself, around whom the plot centres, is totally invisible. In fact, he's dead. Suddenly Last Summer is very much a product of its time and it's all there in shameful, melodramatic 1950s glory. The troubled relationship between mother and son, otherwise known as the Oedipus Complex, the promiscuous homosexual, and the caring shrink, out to, quite literally, sever the ills of society and make us all feel better. But should we be surprised? This, after all, was the era of aversion therapy which is akin to sticking your head in the microwave. Great for a quick perm, but hell on the sex life. You didn't sign those papers. You didn't commit me to lying to you. Not yet. But Kathy, the way Aunt Vi put it, there was no choice at all. Mama's got to sign. Besides, honey, it's not like it was for always. In fact, they say that in no time after the little operation, you be... 
able to do what little operation? Oh, Kathy. Look at it. There's only one little operation they perform here. It's on the brain. It's called a lobotomy. You may have heard of it or read about it. I have. It's that nice young doctor's specialty in cases of hopeless lunacy. He bores holes into the skull and operates on the brain. Oh, honey, please don't talk about it. Please. You can't. Oh, you please can't. Stop, stop, stop carrying on like the end of the world. Stop. 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 And then afterwards, you're all right again. <laughs> well, of course, Catherine was traumatized. The poor darling was facing a lobotomy. Here is a very young Elizabeth Taylor working hard to earn her acting stripes, but not quite getting there. Although she and Katie Hepburn both received Oscar nominations for their troubles. And last, but by no means least, our famous friend of Dorothy's, Montgomery Catherine. Clift. So I want you to give me something. Name it, it's yours. I want you to give me all your resistance. Resistance to what? To the truth. The truth is the one thing I've never resisted. Sometimes people think they don't resist it, but they still do. Sebastian said, truth is at the bottom of a bottomless well. Why did... Open your eyes. Why did you try to kill yourself? But for my money, the big star of this film is Mr. Tennessee Williams himself, or at least his writing. Tennessee was a notorious homosexual, there's that word again, and was responsible for creating some of the most memorable characters of this century. I can think of two. Maggie in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, slinking around in sexy lingerie, another great Taylor performance. And, of course, the enigmatic icon of all drama queens, Blanche Dubois in A Streetcar Named Desire, with that famous line, I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. Considering the censorship laws of the 1950s, it's extraordinary that this film was made at all. And seen in this context, Suddenly Last Summer is definitely a watershed film, with the performances very much lifting it above the bigoted era in which it was made. What event are you swimming in? 50 breaststroke. 50 breaststroke. Did you bring your floaties? Yeah. It's breaststroke. Breaststroke. And you won that last year. Oh no, it wasn't last year. It's two years. I've, it's, I've been a while out of the water. Blue tack in too. Yeah. Blue tack in the ears. What's that for? <laughs> Keeps the water out, love. Does it? What brings you along to this event? Uh, the naked men. Now, I hope you get all your strokes in the right place. <laughs> so do I. No. What do you have to do if you're a marshal? Well, I have to get all the men's and yeah. women's details. Yeah, details. Their names Vital and their statistics. Ages. Yeah. Vital statistics, yes. Oh. I've heard on the grapevine that you're in the pink flamingo competition. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've got a swimmer's body. Yes. Are you on the human growth hormone? Are you all a fan of all of the swimming thing? <laughs> you know, up and down in the water. Yes, I am, actually. I'm so nervous. Yes. Now, what event are you competing in? 50 breast. Where are you working now? At the Duke Hotel. It's a scary stroke because you're not allowed to kick the top of the water with your feet. So these are the pink, pink flamingos, everybody. Now, how does that work? Put it on. <laughs> how does it work? You can do it any way you like. So that, really? and that, when you, you, then you go into the water. And how many people were in your team? Four. Four people, and then they take it in turns swimming up and down. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh you don't do it through there. <laughs> yeah. What kind of food do you cook there? A good solid steak, I imagine. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Your yeah, yeah, home style food. Cooking sausages here. Big fat ones too. I say. Meat and three there. Exactly. Yeah. With a little yeah. bit of exotic cuisine thrown oh, in. Food groups. Yeah. <laughs> it's all going to charity. Oh, yeah. Which charity is it going to? Uh, Team Melbourne. Yeah. Oh, that's a look. No, yeah, with wings. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, this is all the vegans, all the veggies. Okay. I've got no meat over here, so, no. you know. But a little heart. bit of oil there. A little bit of vegetarian, yeah, a bit of veggie oil there. Gay game swimming cap. Well, that'll be worth a fortune. Exactly, that's what I thought. It's a bit of latex. You work out all year to come along to this event, or do you swim all the time? This event. Yes. This is the highlight of the year. Oh, forget the World Games. This is far more important.
might be the new female condom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that having trouble with the design of it. Human growth hormones? Yes. Down in the change room, they're doing urine tests at the moment. Welcome again to Girl Talk. Last guest of the day. It's saying that I really love the content in this segment. Um, now, last week we looked at erectile, a couple of weeks we looked at erectile dysfunction, and we, this time we're going to look at party drugs. Okay, and we need to say that this is not, a, not that we're, actually, we're condoning the use of such party drugs, but rather to, to caution people and to highlight some of the risks associated, yeah? Uh, how, where, what, these drugs are illegal, we need Absolutely, to say. Absolutely, okay. yeah. So, could, can we identify some of the drugs which people may come in contact with? I suppose when people refer to party drugs, they're mainly sort of the group of drugs which are called stimulants. And the major ones would be ecstasy and speed or amphetamines, I suppose the ones that are most commonly used party drugs. Okay. So, if, how, does, how, how do we minimise the risk involved? Yeah. I mean, what are the dangers associated with some of these drugs, I suppose? One of the main risks, Kay, is that because they're illegal, um, people don't know what they're getting. I mean, if a doctor prescribes an antibiotic or something like that, you can be absolutely 100% sure that what was prescribed is what they're getting. But dealers will cut things in, you know, you sort of buy, if somebody buys a drug, they really can't be sure whether they're getting what they're paid for or other drugs. Often they're cut with a bit of heroin and caffeine and strychnine and mm -hmm. uh, amphetamine. So there, there's, there's a risk to start with that you don't know what you're taking, I suppose, is the risk. Okay. The, sorry. I was going to say, <laughs> well, what do you do about that? So do you need to be aware of the source or how does... It yeah, I suppose it's a question of being cautious okay. about uh, not downing something where you don't know uh, uh, really what, uh, what's in it. What precautions can you take with regards to these drugs? Um, I think the environment's important. I think that um, uh, people should be sure that they're in a safe environment, that there's people with them, uh, hopefully people that aren't using around them, that are able to, you know, seek help, call an ambulance, mm -hmm. uh, deal with problems if they, uh, if they arise. So we're kind of hedging around a bit. Something like ecstasy, like E, yeah. um, there's this thing about drinking lots of fluids. Does that apply? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, because one thing that people do when they've uh, uh, taken stimulants is they dance a lot. There's a lot of physical activity. Uh, so your body generates an awful lot of heat. It also loses a lot of fluid through sweating and, thi and things like that. Okay. So it's important to people to keep an eye on their body temperature. Sort of rest, really the rest, recommend that you rest every, a few minutes in every hour. Okay. What about something like speed? Um, the main risk around that one is it puts the blood pressure up, it increases the heart attack, and people can have really sort of substantial sort of psychological reactions, panic, fear attacks, paranoia, right. that sort of thing. Okay. And then I, I guess it, it follows, obviously it follows it's, uh, with a, if any kind of needles are involved, it's the, the yeah. same precautions, m meaning to not share needles and things yeah. like that? Not share needles, and also all injecting equipment, not just the needles. Uh, people will often share other sort of pieces of injecting equipment, and that can transmit hepatitis C as well as HIV. Okay, so there's a few risks involved. Um, what, do we, what, what do you do if something does go wrong? I give you a party and somebody starts freaking out, one of your friends. Uh, the the important thing is, the first thing is to take them to a sort of a quiet, still, cool environment and let them to have a rest for a few minutes. So people are out of that sort of high stimulation where there's a lot of people around, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of, mu a lot of music, that can upset people uh, a lot. So if people are just getting upset, you take them to a quiet, comfortable environment and calm them down. Okay. If people aren't making sense, if people don't seem lucid, you just have to call an ambulance basically. Okay. It, can, it can be a very serious situation. So we've actually highlighted some of the kind of like some of the harder drugs here, yeah. but if, uh, alcohol should be considered as a party drug as well, yeah? Yeah. So obviously the, that, that follows things like drinking, not don't drink and drive and things like that as well. Like, I guess being aware of what you're taking yeah. and stuff. Okay. Um, so, and obviously they, it, people could con consult a doctor as well with regards to something like this. Yeah, I think it's important that people really have so those sources of information, I suppose, whether it's a doctor or a counsellor, that sort of stuff, that you can ask questions about that. Because even though, as you say, we can't condone these, uh, these are illegal substances, sure. but people still have to have sources of information about what the real risks are.
Indeed, thank you very much. Now, of course, we have been dealing in this segment with, with STDs and the like, and I wonder if you could get a shot on that, Anna. That's, these are some of the pamphlets which are available, quite specifically targeted at... We should have done these during the STD yeah. segment, should we? Never mind. Quite specifically targeted at some of the STDs, yeah? And this one is a fun one as well. I got this from the VAC. That's what it looks like. That's a great leaflet called on the Do Choose Enjoy. So it's a about, good read. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's about uh, it's about sexual practices and how to enjoy them without necessarily getting an STD while you're doing it. Great. It has good pictures as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Nick, for participating in these segments. Now, we need to say that you are at the Centre Clinic, mm -hmm. which is Nackland Street. It's Absolutely. part of the PLWHA Centre. Thanks for coming in. I hope you can come back in the next season. It's been lovely, Karen. Okay. <laughs>